video games are not fun anymore. And I know what you're thinking. Jer, this is a gaming channel. It's called Gen Jer Gaming for a reason, right? Well, today I am going to be talking about games and in a negative sense. And let's be honest, games just don't feel fun anymore. I remember buying a fresh Nintendo game, putting it right into my system, blowing it in between, making sure there was no dust and boom, entertainment was completely there on my television. And back then there weren't LCD screens. It was just a simple tube television. Nowadays, I just feel like games in my library don't sit very well and they just are basically sitting on the shelf completely. It's basically like Andy throwing away his toys in Toy Story. But what about you? Do you put games on your shelf now or do you just play them for maybe an hour and you just totally forget about them? That's how I feel. Hello, my name is Jer, one half of the Ginger Gaming Duel and today I wanted to talk about why video games feel so boring nowadays. We're going to dive into a discussion about why we're so disinterested in gaming and if so, why does it feel so boring for a short period or a long period of time? We're also going to be talking about how simply we can enjoy video games itself. I will be bringing issues like minor mental health topics, so please consult a therapist and take this video with a grain of salt and just think of it as a discussion as opposed to facts. If you like discussion videos like this, hit the like and subscribe button. We're trying to reach up to 1k and we've already reached up to 500, so we really appreciate all the love and support. And stick to the end of the video because we're going to be talking about some positive ways that we can play video games without feeling too bored. Who can say no to Mario when you first lay your hands on the game? Or when you played Duck Hunt when you started shooting with the little gun? Or maybe you've also played some games like MMORPGs like Guild Wars or WoW. Or you've also played games like Diablo which I'm a huge fan of. Now as I'm getting older I feel like a lot of games just have lost their charm. My wife and I play video games and it's actually a huge hobby of ours to the point where we started streaming and we were starting to make YouTube videos just like this. The only games that I felt recently that had a lot of life for me personally were Animal Crossing and Final Fantasy 7 Remake because I was home 24-7 with my wife during the pandemic. I think it was a time in my life where it told me to slow down and in an ever-changing world. But nowadays, things have gone back to the norm and I feel like games just aren't as fresh and they don't feel as authentic anymore. Information is everywhere. I was in the generation of KB toy stores, Toys R Us, Funko Land, and where my parents bought me my first Nintendo 64. I was so stoked y'all, not gonna lie. I was that little kid in Christmas and I still remember the first time I opened up that box and smelt that fresh Nintendo 64 system. Before the internet, I was not swayed by decisions besides commercials on TV and maybe some magazines like GamePro and Nintendo Power. Y'all know what's up with that magazine by the way. But digital marketing was not a thing back then and the decisions I made were solely based on my own. The critics and standards are set extremely high now for the media and because expectations are so high, whether you see critics like IGN or a GameSpot or some sort of other media outlet, we want better things from a game. And I swear everyone is like a critic on YouTube in some sort of way. Scores are now validated through the media and we don't make conscious decisions for ourselves overall. This is extremely valid because there is so much information. With access to notifications, apps on your phone, the computer, even your watch, you're able to access information constantly and that can be very overwhelming for people, including myself, when in reality we should just be taking a small little break. Competition and esports. As a child, I never had too much competition playing video games. Playing with my simple NES system, I was just diving into Super Mario Brothers in my living room. I also remember having some friends over playing the N64. We were playing games like Super Smash Bros, Mario Kart, and GoldenEye. Y'all know Odd Job was a cheat though. But those were genuine times spent playing together, and negative aspects were rarely made with my friends. However, I came into an era when it all changed when StarCraft and Counter Strike came out between 1998 to 2000. And that's when the real time strategy really started becoming a very big game changer, including first person shooters for Counter Strike. Because I was in my own business playing Final Fantasy 7, I wasn't really interested in that game, but a lot of my friends influenced me to play these games, and I started playing it, and it started becoming very addicting. I wasn't too good on StarCraft, but Counter-Strike in itself was very unique because you were playing with more objectives. Nowadays, content creators are buying esports teams, NFL owners are buying esports teams, and it's just starting to turn into an investment instead of a bunch of high school, college kids that just wants to play games now. Now it's turning into a sport, and as much as I love the competitive competitive edge, but I don't think you can really enjoy a game when you're having to pressure to play games 8 to 10 hours a day if it's the same game 
over and over again and that can be very mentally tolling. There are too many games to play. This was never a problem. There were never many releases, at least from what I could recall as a child. There are now big developers making new games, smaller developers trying to make it into the industry, and you're constantly seeing monthly and bi-weekly announcements on games. Games are expensive now as well too. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is like $70, which is honestly enough for you to feed groceries for almost a week or even your phone bill for the month. They're still not going to stop me from buying this beautiful game though. I still remember even buying games that were only $60 even as a child and inflation is really hitting us hard friends. There are too many sales. There are sales on holidays. There are sales on weekends. There are sales because there should be a sale. There should be a sale because it's a bundle and with so many access points on different games like Steam, EA, Epic, Blizzard. It's really hard to justify not buying a game if you see those cross marks and knowing you're going to get a discount. But because there are lots of access to these games, you play for an hour and you're asking yourself, do I have time to play this game? Because Tears of the Kingdom is literally coming out next month. Or hey, I uh, think that Tears of the Kingdom is going to be a fun game, but Diablo 4 is coming out next month as well too. Take example for me right now, because basically this is me playing video games during the summer in my head without any responsibilities for the day. Okay, Jair, so you have 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. for Genshin Impact, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for Honkai Star Rail, then from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. you have a very hefty schedule for Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, so next thing up we have is between 12 p.m. to 12 p.m. you have a very quick lunch, but right after that you're going to be playing Tears of the Kingdom again. Again, we got to grind that out as much as possible. From 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. we also have to do Fortnite. You know, there's a lot of new things that are coming out. And then maybe about 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. we have Octopath Traveler and also make content. Yeah, it, it feels like a lot and yeah, it kind of feels like work right rewards battle passes and achievements nowadays a lot of people tend to play free to play and for good reason it's free kind of uh but boy do they demand the crap out of you if you get rewards for playing you get some items here and there but it's cheap so you might as well just get the battle pass right at, or a daily login situation but because of that incentive it gets you to play the game more even if it's just for a few minutes also there's a major fomo because once you buy the battle pass and if it's gone all those incentives and cosmetics for your player are no more we have seasons the battle pass daily logins extra boosts you can buy so you don't need to spend time doing it achievements so you can just try to do them so you feel accomplished even for amazing games like zelda once the game's over you can also buy the expansion dlc to help expand your experiences even further rewards take a lot of time and effort and we're just simply bored we're bored out of our minds let's be honest our brains are now set to being demanded to have things done quickly and i mean just look at amazon you can literally get shipment in less than a day you constantly nag that you don't have the package after an hour after the scheduled time delivery you don't want to finish the battle pass no problem let the skin pack boost you up are you tired of playing the game after an hour no problem you can buy another game on sale to get out of your boredom did you just finish the game well let me try to grind myself harder to do a speed run on Elden Ring with no deaths because I want to feel something again but do it faster. We're constantly needing to feel content and why do you think we look at our phones so much instead of talking to our partners face to face or sneaking your way on the side of the bathroom for 30 minutes to get out of the office to get your Twitter tea high? We're just simply bored and that has to do with gaming because developers are constantly trying to find innovative ways for you to keep playing their games. And honestly, after a long day of work, you just want to play some games but you're so tired that you end up falling falling asleep and you have to wake up at 6 a.m. to go to your normal 9 to 5 job. Most of the time it's just Netflix, you watch a little anime, YouTube, streams, and then you're off to bed. So how can we combat boredom from gaming? Don't rush the game. Games deserve to be cherished and with the pressure of going through games, whether you see your favorite streamers getting through them quickly or just wanting to finish it all in one day, just remember that you bought this game for a good reason. Whether it was for the hype or you just want to play the game after a long day of work, either way, it's a beautiful piece of art you bought and observing the game from its design to the music in the back should be embraced completely. Treat life like a game. There is something called the outside world and yeah, I know it's been scary since the pandemic when germs are all types of things are all around us. Hell, I, I still don't even want to go to a large crowd concert because of the germs. But for me being 
being accountable and checking off a list is a healthy way for me to do these things. And no, it's not achievements or objectives like in video games, but think about it more as if you were outside. What errands do you need to do, like your daily quest to go to the gym? or to finish your assignment? What are the side quests that you want to achieve? Maybe it was something like a small hike or possibly connecting with a friend or family member you haven't seen in a while. Remember, gaming isn't all indoors. Everything you keep yourself accountable for for your actions is a part of the journey of your game. Play games with your friends. Yes, text your friends. Join them on a Discord call. Just to follow up with your friends and family. Yes, text them. I'm super introverted and it's definitely a very difficult thing for me to ask people to play games. But when I do, I feel like there is always a connection with them. Most of my current friends have kids and it's very difficult to play with them as they have journeyed into new adventures. But this is a great opportunity to meet new people. Jen and I are actually moving to Vegas and we really want to find similar people who enjoy a lifestyle of gaming but also have time to enjoy things like dogs and business and just good old conversations. Try out other games. I know how crazy it can be with the same game you're playing over and over again and you might think you might just enjoy that sort of genre but sometimes things can get very boring. Playing a different style game can be very refreshing. Take it from me as I've always liked to play JRPGs and action story games, but the pandemic actually got me to play Animal Crossing and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. It helped me connect with Jen, but a whole community of people and even started our own Twitch channel because of it. Who knows what games can take us, but it's given me a better perspective on how I play games and an openness to value games I never thought that I would ever try. Don't feel pressure to play games that you do not want to play. Yes, do not feel pressure to play these games. I know some some people will ask you to play games or all the time, but set boundaries and tell yourself it's okay to tell them that you're busy or you're not wanting to play games that day. I had old toxic friends who played sport games and looked down on me for playing games like Skyrim and it was only for nerds when I was just trying to impress them and play sport games because they wanted to do so. Play what you want to play because that is what gaming is all about. I mentioned try other games, but if you don't like it, you don't have to play the game again. Don't let others despise you because you want to play Elden Ring. Damn it, if you want to play it, then let them be. All of this requires discipline. This is probably the hardest thing, but honestly, being disciplined. We tend to be comfortable about what we think when we enjoy playing games. It might just be another boring chore to us. Remember to set boundaries for yourself, keep accountable of your actions, connect with people, and do something refreshing for yourself. This is to be disciplined. There's no better refreshing feeling to see someone get out of the cycle and do something different for once. Who knows, maybe that might be the bigger change of your life and gaming won't be the primary thing that it once was. Having a partner like Jen who loves gaming helps, but remember to surround the people who support your lifestyle. And if it's something you want to change because of how bored you are with games, search for people that have similar interests to you. There are a lot of good Discord communities and you can always reach out to people, whether it be on Twitch, on YouTube. A lot of positive people are really out there. Times like 2020 have made me realize that life is short and that you should play games when you want to play your games and don't let other people dictate what you want to do. Now, I hope this video gave you a better perspective as to how you can play games and how to enjoy them in a much better way. Maybe there was something that resonated with you and if it did, give us a comment down below and let us know how you're feeling about video games today. Again, my name is Jer. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night. Bye-bye, y'all.